Hey, what is up, everybody? It's me, Anthony, here to talk to you again about another episode of Apple's new sci-fi series, Dark Matter. So if you haven't already, please check out my first two recaps of the series right here. I know a lot of you have been enjoying the series so far, so have I. And if you haven't already, like I said, join the community. Let's talk some more Dark Matter. Let's get confused. Let's solve some questions. Just join the community. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel because we're going to be talking about everything Dark Matter as well as some other shows and movies along the way. So if you like that kind of stuff and you like talking about TV series but you don't like the whole technical side of everything, you just want to shoot the shit with a buddy that you don't know that you're seeing on YouTube, I'm the perfect person for you. So without further ado, let's get into the recap of episode 3 of Dark Matter titled the box. So the episode opens with Amanda getting a call from Leighton telling her that they have Jason, but Don ended up killing Daniela in the process. Back at Leighton's company, Leighton tells Jason what happened to Daniela is on him and that they were not prepared for Jason to return in the state that he is in. Back in the other reality, the evil Jason has dinner with Daniela and bumps into Barbara, an old friend of the family, and Jason finds out that they are going to have a dinner party full of people that he doesn't know. It is at this point that Jason starts to panic. We are then introduced to Detective Jamie Mason, who talks with Leighton about Jason's disappearance, as well as another employee, Blair. Leighton lies about his knowledge of their whereabouts and Detective Mason says that she would like to speak to, to Dr. Amanda about Jason. After talking with the detectives, Amanda confronts Leighton about the current situation and what Don did to Daniela. Leighton says that they have to quickly figure out how to use the box because the police are closing in on figuring out what is going on and that if they don't figure things out, they'll all go to jail. Jason wakes up and screams at the camera and asks whoever is watching to help him remember. Leighton and Amanda visit Jason and start to tell him more about what they are working on and take Jason to see the box. After checking out the box, Leighton shows Jason what happened the day he entered the box and his return three days later. Back in Jason's room, Amanda visits and tells him what happened the day of his disappearance. Amanda tells him that the day before, Jason had met with his ex and told Amanda that everything was fine, but deep down she knew that there was something wrong, and after she was done with her shower, she saw that Jason was gone. Jason starts to question his reality and tells Amanda, what if he is the person that everyone else thinks that he is? Back at home, the evil Jason gets ready for the house party and looks at his notes that he made to try to blend in. And this is the point of the show where I was hoping, praying that somebody would figure him out or like cut through his bullshit or something like that and just, just catch the guy because I'm I'm tired of this. I'm really hating this evil Jason. Back in the other reality, Jason is being interrogated by Leighton and Leighton asks Jason to tell him the truth and Jason says that he is. Leighton then brings in Ryan Holder and says that Jason told Ryan and Daniela the truth and tells Jason that he is an imposter. Well, what should we do today? Let's try on a thousand shoes. Wait a minute. You're an imposter! He asks Jason how he used the box to get here and where is he from. Jason then attacks Layden but is quickly taken down by security. Ryan is thrown in the same room as Jason and the two are reunited and Jason tells Ryan that they killed Daniela. Ryan says that everything is his fault because he got a call from Layton and told him everything. Jason then asks Ryan what did he ask him to make before he left and Ryan said that he made a drug that would alter the brain. Ryan and Jason also talk about the observer effect which I find kind of funny that we're talking about the observer effect because there was another Apple TV Plus show where the observer effect was pretty much the whole thing that the show was revolved around and that was the show Constellation which uh, unfortunately got canceled after just one season so I don't know if the observer effect is a curse or not and uh, 
If it's gonna apply to this show, let's hope not. Later that night, Amanda breaks Jason out of his room and tells him that they have to leave. During their escape, they are spotted by Layton and end up in the lab where the box is. Jason and Amanda get into the box and try to shut the door, but Don and Layton attempt to push the door open. Jason and Amanda end up closing the door and in the process, cut off Don's fingers. And this was a random moment that I was like what the heck why why did we have to show that but i think that these fingers might be leading into something bigger down the line so stay tuned to my theory section for what i think that the fingers have to do with anything can't believe i've said fingers so many times amanda tells jason that they have to take a drug the same drug that ryan made before they can use the box and after taking the drug, both Amanda and Jason pass out. Back in the other reality, the evil Jason is watching a video of Jason and his family when he opens up a box that contains Charlie's birth certificate as well as another child, Maximilian Dessen. I never really thought that people, you know, actually chose the name Maximilian for their kids. But, uh... That's, that, that's what happened. <laughs> the episode ends with Jason and Amanda waking up in the box but it's a lot different than before. And that is the end of episode three of Dark Matter. And I gotta say guys, we're, we're getting into it now. I mean, this show has finally reached the point of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness type of action now. We're, we're gonna see him jumping through different realities. I better see a crocodile version of Jason. I, be I better see it. But I thought that this episode was the best one so far. I like that we keep on getting new information that is keeping me invested into the characters and into the story and the world of this series. I like it because it's not enough information to totally just like, hey, this is this is what it is and there's nothing else for us to build on. It's just little bits here and there to keep us going along. And I really enjoyed that about this series so far. Also, the characters have finally, for the most part, caught up to what the audience know. So we we can get that thing out of the way of like, hey, you're, you're Jason, man. You're not the different reality, Jason. Now some characters are finally figuring out that like, hey, you know, this might be a different Jason from a different reality. And we'll get to how those characters figured out <laughs> that the good Jason is who he is and he's not from their universe. We'll get to that later in the theory section, but I'm just really happy that they finally are at least pulling off the Band-Aid to that little segment because... It was really hard for me to watch at points. But as always, guys, let me know what you think of episode three of Dark Matter in the comments down below. Did you like this episode? Did you hate this episode? Are you excited for episode four? Because I saw the synopsis of episode four and we're in for some doozy, man. And like I said, we getting some Doctor Strains and the, the, the multiverse of madness kind of stuff that's going to be happening. I'm here for it. Now we're getting into the theory section of the video. And the first thing that I want to talk about is how did Amanda come to this realization that this Jason is not her Jason. And I think that was when they were talking in that scene after Jason saw the box for the first time and she came to visit him and they were talking. I think she kind of, it kind of just clicked with her the way that Jason was talking that like, hey, you know, I don't think this is the same guy that I was in love with or that I was dating, you know, that I lived with and everything. This, this is a totally different person. And you can kind of see her have that realization when she leaves the room and she's like walking down the hallway and she's just like having like a moment like, I don't think he's the Jason that I know. So let me know what you think. How did Amanda come to this realization? I'm sure we're gonna get more information about that uh, in the next episode or probably more episodes after that. But I think that was probably the point where she got that realization. But let me know what you think. And speaking about people finally realizing things, Leighton seems to finally realize that uh, Jason is not who he says he is and that he is an imposter using his words. But how did he figure that out? I think, he talked to Ryan first and Ryan told him everything like, hey, you know, Jason came back and he's saying this weird story about how he's a different person and blah, 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 blah. And Leighton being the kind of smart guy that, you know, we've seen so far, he kind of put two and two together. He knows what the box is capable of, of going to different realities and stuff, which I find kind of funny that he didn't think of that when Jason first came back, that maybe this is a possibility of a different reality, Jason, even though that he knows that the box could take you to different realities. So 
I, I that that was kind of weird that he it took him that long to realize it, but uh, I think that's pretty much how he figured it out. He talked to Ryan, he put two and two together, and now he knows that. Jason is an imposter. And now probably the biggest question that I have for this episode is the fingers moment. Uh, Dawn's fingers getting chopped off as she tries to push the the box door open. Um, I, I was kind of like confused why they showed that scene, why that scene was necessary. Are you showing me like her fingers getting cut off? What is that going to add to her character other than her not having fingers? <laughs> But I think this is going to have to do with something with the Schroeder's cat theory. Uh, forgive me for my ignorance because I'm not really into like science or know that much about science. But from what the show has told us is that there's a point in the cat's life where it's actually alive and dead at the same moment. And now that we have the fingers in the box and transported to a different reality that are they alive? They're alive fingers, but they're also dead fingers. Maybe some way they're going to be able to track that. I don't know how they're going to be able to do that, but maybe they are. But I'm rambling here. Let me know what you think about the whole Dawn's fingers. Is it actually going to lead to something further on in the series or did they just cut off her fingers just to cut them off? Let me know in the comments down below. But that is it, guys. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel so we can uh, get to that 3,000 subscribers mark. We are almost there. And thank you guys so much for all the love and support that you guys have been showing this channel and these videos. I love doing this stuff. I love talking about TV shows with the rest of you guys. You guys have been been killing it. It's, it's pretty pretty awesome. I, I'm I'm amazed every time I see you guys just interacting and we're just building this community up of just people that want to talk about TV shows and movies and stuff. I love it. Thank you guys so much. And remember, keep watching.